Hello and welcome back to Get All Access, your gateway to the intriguing world of research. If you're joining us for the first time, here's a quick recap. We are on a mission to make research accessible to everyone, breaking down the barriers of jargon and limited access. For our regular viewers, thank you for your continued support. Today, we dive deep into the digital realm, exploring the challenges and intricacies of Arab journalism in the age of big tech monopolies. The digital sphere, as we know, has transformed various sectors, but how has it impacted journalism, especially in the Arab region? Our guide for today's journey is Professor Noha Meller, a distinguished media professor from the University of Sharjah. Her recent paper titled The Digital Divide in Arab Journalism the role of big tech and the quest for freedom of speech provides a comprehensive analysis of the digital divide in the Arab journalism sector, focusing on the implication of big tech's increasing dominance. Noha, thank you so much for joining us today on Get All Access. Before we delve into the intricacies of your research, could you please introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah. My name is Noha Miller, I'm native Egyptian, uh, spent almost 30 years in Europe and back to the region like last year, uh, being a professor in media at the University of Sharjah. Fantastic, Noha. Let's kick off our first segment. What I want to ask you is what were your motivations behind choosing this particular topic and conducting this research? I mean, the rationale came from the um, increasing debate about technology driving economic growth in the Arab region, which has grown since 2011 and the uprisings, uh, with the American big tech firms being credited as a driving force behind social uprisings. However, of course, 10 years later, this view had shifted because of the increasing role of social media platforms in spreading false information. But the article basically um, was driven by the uh, my interest in examining how the uh, dissemination of digital technology in the Arab region manifests digital divide between the global north and global south. And I take journalism uh, sector as a case study, arguing that the notion of technology as a means to liberation and prosperity obscures the reality of uh, global uh, inequality. Moving on to our next segment, in this segment, we delve into the heart of any research paper, the research design. The design not only shapes the study, but also ensures its credibility and relevance. Noha, your paper employs a rich tapestry of evidence from opinion pieces penned by Arab journalists to informal conversations with them. You have also incorporated a thematic analysis of the articles, focusing on the digital technologies use in Arab newsroom and opportunities presented in the digital market. Could you walk us through the research design of your paper? Specifically, how did you decide on this mixed method approach and how did it help in capturing the nuances of the digital divide in Arab journalism? I mean, my focus was on the third level of digital divide which is uh, the in terms of tangible outcomes of digital technology so it's not only how many people own smartphones or how many journalists have access to the internet but actually the tangible outcomes um, and focusing as i said on journalism so i wanted to document the divide not only in terms of access and skills but also to illustrate how this divide could hinder users and journalists in the global south, like in the Arab region, from benefiting fully from digital technologies. So I used a range of evidence uh, to, to, to examine the impact of digital technology on journalist, journalistic practices in the region, uh, drawing on around yeah, 80 opinion pieces written by Arab journalists in which they reflect on the state of the profession. Uh, and the role of technology. So the role is, uh, or the aim was to facilitate the space for Arab voices and mediate their opinions, uh, especially in the presence of hierarchy of voices where some voices like Western voices, obviously, are more authoritative than Arab 
wants when it comes to culture uh, industries like journalism. Uh, and the data is analyzed using thematic analysis of the Arab uh, journalists' articles, focusing on two themes, the journalists' assessment of the use of digital technology in Arab newsrooms, demonstrating first and second level of digital divide, and their evaluation of the opportunities offered in the digital uh, market, which is the third level, and I draw also on uh, some informal conversations with Arab journalists in Dubai and in London about digital journalism in the region. So I wanted to explore the underpinning discourse of technology as a liberating tool that could bring Arab journalists uh, closer to their counterparts in the global uh, north. Uh when you do a formal interview, when you do a, you know, like a standard interview for research and when you do an informal interview, uh, how would you describe the advantages? I mean, um, is, it, is, it, is it something that um, most researchers um, do not apply? And what do you think is um, the benefits of actually going for informal conversations? Informal conversations as a kind of, a, it is a, a method but it, it gives you background information and they talk to you. It's, it could be a conversation like the one we're having now. So that's an informal conversation, but I can also draw on it in my research. Um, but I'm not doing it formally in the sense of, you know, kind of a, a formal uh, interview as such. But yeah, where you, where you already described to them the particular yeah. structure that you would yeah. like to, you know, because talk, then they, talk, they talk to you. The yeah, they talk to you freely. And I got the information right. that I, I could never dream of having. Of course, they were not, I, I can't prove that they are absolutely accurate. Like someone told me a figure about how much Facebook uh, might be sharing with all Arab publishers in the region. I think it was, I read it, I wrote it in the book. Um, I think he said something like um, 10 to $20 million a year, which is nothing. Wow. Um, compared, uh, but of course I can't really. This, this figure is never in the public domain, right? I mean, this is this is never exactly. shared in the public it's domain. Not in the public domain, and the point is, it's a fraction. If if it's true, it's a fraction of Facebook's digital mm. ad revenue in the region, which is estimated to be around, true. I think, up to one billion dollars. That was recorded in 2020, and a small market compared to Facebook's total advertising revenue, which is more than. Uh, well over eighty billion dollars. Uh, of course, of course. So of course. you're talking about um, yeah, and this is the advantage of informal conversations is that you are basically right. having coffee right. with someone right. and they are telling you things um, that you would never have in a formal interview. Transitioning now onto our favorite segment, we call it the quotable quotes. For all our viewers, this segment is a gold mine. We ask our esteemed guest to share a standout quote from their research findings. So if you are a researcher or an academic tuning in, this is your chance to grab a quote directly from the source and incorporate it into your work. And to make things even more seamless for you, the full transcription of this episode, including Noah's quote, will be available in the show notes. So you can easily cite it into your paper or presentation. Moreover, I will be providing the full citation of Noah's paper for everybody's reference. So everything you need is right at your fingertips. Noah, the floor is yours. Could you share with us your quotable quote from your research, something that encapsulates the essence of your finding or a point you feel is particularly important or poignant from your findings? Yeah, well, um, the first quote would be um, this one. American tech giants have not only defined the region's digital technology, but also seized the lion's share of the digital ad market to the detriment of Arab news outlets. Another quote is, is this one. Arab media seems to have surrendered to the dominance of American tech giants, which have doubled their profits, while revenue from the Arab news market has declined. This has led to the axing of many newsrooms, especially those which have built their economic model on advertising revenue. And instead of developing ways to increase digital literacy, measuring the audience's engagement with the news, inclusive access or privacy regulations, 
Arab media outlets compete among themselves to get more clicks for a fraction of the digital advertising revenue. Uh, one last one, it is not enough to document the digital divide among journalists in the global south versus those in the global north in terms of access to the internet without also delving into the ways the internet is used to achieve certain outcomes, such as bridging the gap between journalists in both spheres. And this inequality should warrant the attention of journalists, scholars, and governments to interrogate the role of digital technology in maintaining the global digital divide and the hegemony of tech giants in the digital sphere. So definitely, there's a lot to think about um, as far as uh, the findings are concerned. And thank you so much for sharing your quotable quotes. So as we approach the conclusion of this very enlightening episode, um, I would like to take a moment to look ahead. Uh, so Noha, I'm sure um, our audience have been captivated by today's discussion and would love to hear more about your current research projects. So could you give us a sneak peek as to what you're working on now? And of course, we'd love to know uh, when we might have the pleasure of hosting you again on Get All Access. Yeah, I'm working on a new project that I know you're also interested in. And uh, uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, I want to, uh, basically, I want to um, contribute to the emerging digital media and technology stay in the same, in the same theme again building on, on that article, but also in a new, uh, book that was released last year called uh, Arab Digital Journalism. Um, so the new project will focus on freelancers in the UAE, focusing on Dubai Media City and Sharjah Media City. Uh, and these include professionals who work as media, so-called media entrepreneurs, offering their services in the field of journalism, PR, digital technology, media production, and so on. And I want to draw on interviews with sample of um, uh, freelancers, kind of possessing different forms of digital capital. Um, and uh, yeah, so I want to engage with the ongoing debate about the role of digital technology again in, in, in fostering um, wealth generation, entrepreneurship in the global south. Um, presenting the challenges as well as opportunities afforded by digital technology and its impact, particularly on the rising uh, cohort of digital freelancers uh, concentrated, as I said, in certain media cities here in the UAE. And I know you personally are interested, and so it will be nice to collaborate. Mm -hmm. No. Yes, definitely. I, I, I can tell you for sure that this episode uh, will be seen and is being seen, uh, you know, on LinkedIn. And a lot of my connections who are working in the local media industry here would be very much interested uh, to know uh, what you're going to find in your paper. And I think they would be the perfect candidate for, uh, you know, for your subject as well. So anybody who is part of my network, uh, please get in touch please with Please sign up. <laughs> This is the opportunity. And myself as well, uh, with two of my colleagues, uh, one, uh, one of my colleague in American University of uh, Russell Khema and one of my colleague in uh, my ex-colleague in Mahit Dubai. So all three of us are working on something similar, uh, although mm -hmm. we are focusing primarily on freelancers from um, 2454 in Abu Dhabi. Uh, but mm -hmm. definitely, I mean, we'd love to share notes. And I think the next episode definitely with you would be where we would be sharing notes uh, from our from our individual papers. And I think that's going to be a very interesting discussion. I'll definitely try to get in uh, my uh, collaborators also into the platform. And I think we'll have a, we'll have a good discussion on the media freelancers in the UAE. So um, with that, uh, thank you great. so much, Noha, uh, for gracing uh, the second episode of Get All Access uh, with your insights and expertise. It's been truly enlightening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Now to all the researchers out there, it's time to think beyond the conventional. While announcing a publication on platforms like LinkedIn is great, imagine the impact of diving deep, discussing and dissecting your work in a conversational setting. It not only broadens the reach of your research, but also makes it more accessible and relatable to a wider audience. And what better platform than Get All Access to do just that? If you're looking for a space to start your research journey, we are here to host you. To our dedicated audience, your support means a world to us. If you found value in today's episode, please hit that like button, share it with your community, and don't forget to subscribe. 
And for those instant notifications, make sure you ring that bell icon. Remember, knowledge grows when shared. And Get All Access is your gateway to the world of research. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and stay curious.